Well, hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Hey, my name is Philip Brown. This is a really cool problem. It's pretty fun. And hey, if you are a math teacher, stick around to the end. I've used this in my class and it's been a lot of fun. Students really get engaged, lots of conversations and stick around to the end. I'll show you some ways you can use it and share some stuff with you so that you can use it in your classroom. So anyway, let's get into it. The sock problem, right? So here's the situation. You're in a hotel room, can't find the light and uh, man, suitcases in the corner. You need a pair of clean socks. So First situation is you've got six red, six green. You're going to grab a handful. What's the minimum amount you need to grab to make sure to guarantee that you get a matched pair? The second version, a little trickier, there's seven socks that are purple. I don't know why you pack seven purple socks, but whatever. You got six white and uh, three orange socks. So what's the minimum number of socks that you have to grab in order to guarantee that you get a matched pair again. Now, third situation, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. There are seven socks that are purple. There are six white socks and three orange socks. You got to grab a bunch of them. What's the minimum amount you can grab that would guarantee that within that amount you grab, there is a matched pair? So let's get into it, shall we? So version one, we've got the six socks that are red, six that are green. We're going to grab a handful. What's the minimum amount that we have to get in order to make sure, right? Get a matching pair. So go ahead and uh, pause it right now. Put your answer in the comments and I'm going to start getting into it. So first thing first, one sock, of course, does not make a matched pair because it could be red or could be green, but it's only one. It's not a pair. So you got to pick another. You pick another. I don't know. Might be a match. Might not. Right. I mean, if it's green, it's good to go, but it might be red. So it's not guaranteed. So that's not it. When you pick your next sock, though, your third one, it's either red which is a match, or it's green, which is a match. So the minimum to guarantee in this situation is three. All right, on to version two. So you've got seven purple socks for some reason and six white socks and three orange socks. Now, without looking, you're going to grab a bunch of them. What's the minimum number of socks that you have to grab to guarantee that somewhere in that batch you got a matched pair? All right, so try this one. Put your answer in the comment. Let me know how you're doing. We're going to start doing this one now. All right, so I'm going to break this one down this way. Your first choice, you don't know what it's going to be, orange, purple, or white. It could be any of the three, right? So let's just pick one. It doesn't really matter, all right? So we're just going to pick, we're going to say, hey, on our first choice, we got an orange sock. Now you pick a second one. Man, there is a one out of three chance that you got a pair, but it could be purple, which is a no-go. It could be white, which is a no-go. It could be orange, which would work, but... Man, not a guarantee, right? So two is possible, but not a guarantee, and we're looking for a guarantee. So third choice, same game, right? Could be purple, not a pair, right? So if it's not a guarantee, it doesn't really matter. It's got a high probability, but no deal. So turns out it's going to be our fourth, and here's why. You pick it. It could be white, pair. Orange could be a pair. Or if it's purple, definitely a pair again. So fourth try. All right, now the last situation is the tricky one. Go ahead and pause the video. Put your answer down below. Here we go. This is a weird one. It's Barney Day at the shop, and you want to dress up like Barney. For some reason, you think wearing purple socks is going to do it, but Barney doesn't even wear socks, much less clothes, so mm, no dice. Anyway, here's the deal. Now, we could possibly get a pair of socks from just two, right? But we've got seven purple, six white, three orange. We have to grab a certain amount. What's the smallest amount to grab that would guarantee, no matter what, you've got a pair of, of purple socks in there? So let's break this down. Let's see how this works, right? So you pick two. They may or may not be a pair. We're talking about guaranteed for sure you're going to get a pair of purple socks. You could go through all of these. You might have a pair in there somewhere, but it's not guaranteed yet. You will not get a guaranteed, yes, I've got two socks that are purple until you get rid of all the others. And then... Ah, on the 11th pick, it works. So how did you do? Did you like this problem? Did you get it right? Did you mess up? Really common wrong answer on the first one is seven. People think what's, I don't know, they get it kind of backwards, like not the minimum number, just what's a number. So anyway, let me know how you did. I really enjoyed this. If you enjoy this content and you want to see more problems like it, man, do all the good stuff on YouTube. It helps out YouTubers. So now if you're a teacher and all right, so if you're a teacher, 
I will put a link in the description so you can download this PDF that introduces, roughly introduces the question to students and gives them a QR code that they can scan. And if they scan it, it takes them to a Google form uh, quiz. Looks just like this. They put their name, runs them kind of through the setup. They get to pick which one they want to do and uh, runs them through the whole thing. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, students really enjoyed it. I had a great time with it. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can take a look at how this will, how this will work. So the students would, you know, they'd fill this out right here. So there's my name. Oh, not that. I can, I can type, I promise. Anyway, uh, they go through, it runs them through, then they get to pick. Which one do they want to do? One, two, or three. So let's say they're going to start on one. They go to number one. Uh, ah, there we go. They go to number one. All right, so if you're a teacher, I will put a link in the description that will let you download this and a Google quizzes, a Google Forms quiz that'll show you in just a second. Uh, you can post this in your classroom. It basically introduces the problem to students, gives them a QR code that they can scan so that they can take, uh, well, let me close that, so they can take this Google Forms quiz. It's pretty cool. Uh, they run in, you know, they have to fill out their stuff, right? Uh, then they get to read about it a little bit, and they get to pick which one they want to do, one, two, or three. So here, let's take a look. So number one, when they go to it, it looks like this right here. They read about it. They can either decide if they want to answer or get a clue. So if they want to get a clue, they select that. It takes them to this right here, this clues right here, and then they can go ahead and try it. So we're going to go ahead and say, I already know the answer is uh, three, right? So they'd answer it try the others, and it takes them back to the beginning where they can pick two or three. So if they go to three, let's say they read about it, it's pretty confusing, they want to see a clue, gives them a clue, and lets them work their way through it. So it's a Google it's a Google um, Forms quiz. It's set up just like this. This is the one I did today uh, in class with my students. Um, you can get a breakdown, see exactly how it looks. Shows you how many students did what and all that kind of stuff. You can import it into Google Classroom if you want to assign grades to it or whatever. Anyway, that's a way to introduce some math just for fun into the classroom. And I think it's a really fun thing to do. It started lots of conversations. And it got kids just interested in having a good time doing math in class. So anyway, I'm really glad you... Uh, did this with us here. I'm glad you watched this video and I hope you got something good out of it. Hope you get to use this in your classroom and until next time, have a great day.